بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعزائي الله وطالبات المستوى الرابع ضمن برنامج بكالوريا الطب بجراحة الفم والأسنان أهلا وسهلا بكم ضمن لقاءاتنا التعليمية في مقرر طب الفم في هذا اللقاء سنواصل الحديث أيضا عن oral ulcers part two as we talking about the first part in the last lecture the eighth lecture well, in this lecture the references it will be the handbook of oral medicine as well as the Birkitt's oral medicine so in this second part of oral ulcerative lesions, at the end of this ninth, ninth lecture, the student should be able to, as an aim for this lecture, the student should be able to perform a thorough examination of ulcerative lesions as well as to correlate the findings with the infections regarding the infections which cause oral manifestations as an ulcerative findings and also the student should be able to diagnose the ulcers of squamous cell carcinoma which might be the most common oral cancer head and neck cancer in general and also the student should be able to recognize the findings clinically of the squamous cell carcinoma and differentiate it from other clinical presentations of other lesions and also the squamous cell carcinoma which might be presented as an ulcers or as a white lesions or lead red lesions or even as a swelling the students also should be able to recognize these types of infections that manifested in the oral cavity as an ulcers also the one of the aims of this lecture the students should be able to reach the definite diagnosis and provide the patient with the best management procedures for those patients who have an ulcerative lesions those will talk about them through this lecture. Through this lecture, we will talk about the squamous cell carcinoma as a very important clinical findings which may be a life-saving for your patient and also we'll talk about the necrotizing cellometaplasia. Also we'll talk about the tuberculosis which is a systemic condition of respiratory system which will manifest in the oral cavity as an ulcers and also we'll talk about a syphilis which is a genital disease which also might, might be presented in the oral cavity as an ulcers. Also, we'll talk about acute, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, which is one of the most important diseases that affect the perioral periodontal tissues of your patient. Starting with squamous cell carcinoma, which is the most common type of hedonic cancer, and we live in a community which is habitualized by many of the bad habits that lead to or can be considered as an etiological factors for squamous cell carcinoma such as cut chewing and also smoker and snuff using so the etiology of squamous cell carcinoma and its pathogenesis there are some etiological factors first of all tobacco either smoking to smoke tobacco or non-smoke tobacco, excessive drinking of alcohol, lower socioeconomic status of the patient also can be a risk factor or an etiology for squamous cell carcinoma. Other factors being involved also the deficiency of iron in the serum of the, your patient, vitamin also the deficiency of iron in the serum of the, your patient, vitamin C deficiency as well as vitamin A and the fungal infection, viral infection, and the stress also may be an etiological factor for squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma. Clinical features or clinical presentation of squamous cell carcinoma range from small erythematous patch through to a large swelling or area of ulceration. So, in fact, we will talk about squamous cell carcinoma first in ulcerative lesions and we will talk about it in red lesions and also we will talk about it in cancer lesions and the lectures of cancer as well as in the white lesions so the squamous cell carcinoma has a variety of clinical presentations so you need to take uh, your consideration into your consideration that the squamous cell carcinoma 
might be presented in the oral cavity as an ulcers or as an re a red lesion or as white lesion or as an uh, 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 other presentations so the crater like lesion with ruled in the urated margins or borders it is a clinical characteristics of squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma of the lip usually present as painless ulcer with ruled margins 70% of squamous cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma develop in the floor of the mouth and the tongue as well as in the retromolar area in this clinical pictures we will see a ulcerative an ulcerative lesion with ruled margins you can see the ruled margins of this ulcer on the vermilion boulder the vermilion boulder of of the uh, border of the uh, lip the uh, covered with a crusted because of the absence of saliva so it is an extra oral ulcer and the squamous cell carcinoma can be presented as a crusted lesion in the vermilion border of the lip of the patient it is also painless at any uh, uh, stage at early stage sorry at the early stage it will be presented as a painless lesion therefore most of those patients present with advanced late stage of the lesions so because there is no any pain there is no any complaint there is no any symptom for squamous cell carcinoma regarding the pain so the patient neglect this lesions and came to you with advanced or late stage involving metastatic unfortunately metastatic for the lesion and spreading to regular lymph adenopathies so the surgical removal it will be complicated the gingiva are rarely affected painless areas of the this site should be also regarded as suspicious the differential diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma the similarities or the lesions that similar in the clinical presentation with, with squamous cell carcinoma is a traumatic ulcer and the uh, ulcers from odontogenic infection major after ulcers ulcers secondary to systemic diseases ulcers of HIV patient as well as the ulcers with immuno uh, the ulcers of low grade mucopdermoid tumors and also the metastatic tumors from other organs keratoacanthoma also should be considered in differential diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma necrotizing cyanometaplasia systemic mycosis chancre and goma which are the syphilitic infection in the primary and tertiary stages and tuberculosis infections as well, well as the chemical burn and basal cell carcinoma so there is a wide variety of differential diagnosis which are might be similarly with the pres uh, clinical presentation of squamous cell carcinoma and should be differentiated carefully how we that we can diagnose the squamous cell carcinoma in the patient with uh, uh, oral ulcer the disease cannot be diagnosed clinically as we see in the last slide there is a wide variety and wide similarities of other lesions which can pre be presented and similar clinically as the squamous cell carcinoma should so we should take a biopsy from the the lesion and the histological examination is the gold standard to prove if there is a squamous cell carcinoma in your patient or not so the biopsy is mandatory to diagnose the patient as a squamous cell carcinoma patient uh, there is a somewhat of use of the exfoliative cytology which is the topical nuclear dye the, the topical removal of the superficial cells from the lesion and topical nuclear dye which is a tolenium chloride dye the brush biopsy can be used for investigating suspicious mucosal lesions but uncertain and limited result will be provided by this biopsy the management of uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma is somewhat complicated so it is considered as one of the uh, cancers 
which is clearly and real in reality related with complications and some functional and aesthetic defects of the head and fa facial maxillofacial area the f five year survival rate from oral cancer is approximately 40 percent varies according to the site so the patient with squamous cell carcinoma and uh, the oral cancer is suspected to live five years as, as a survival rate for those patients lip cancer has the best five year survival rate because it's early detection and the patient will came to your clinic to express his complaining as a crusted lesion in the lips squamous cell carcinoma of the floor of the mouth carries a poor prognosis with a five year survivor survival uh, rate of around 20 percent unfortunately the presence of the metastatic tumor within lymph node which is as a gas into the head and neck the uh, cervical lymph node the treatment consists primarily of surgery so it is a cancerous lesion should be treated as a cancer and the surgery and radiotherapy or combination between both surgery and radiotherapy as the treatment of the squamous cell carcinoma chemotherapy prior to or during or after the treatment can be uh, used microvascular surgery and the use of free flaps in reconstruction has been improved the quality li of the life of the patient as we mentioned the patient can complain from post surgical complications elimination of any tobacco and alcohol can prevent the occurrence of squamous cell carcinoma long-term review to detect any recurrence of the uh, uh, further primary lesions and also any suspicious areas of the oral mucosa persistent areas of ulcerations as we mentioned in the last lecture leukoblakic lesions and orthoerythroblakia should be also biopsied to rule out the presence of malignancy transformation or any dysplastic changes necrotizing cyanometaplasia it is a benign salivary gland condition related with minor salivary gland that presented in the palatal area so these lesions are presented in the palatal area due to local ischemia secondary to altered local blood supply local trauma through injury or surgical manipulation are the most important etiological factors this is the clinical presentation of necrotizing cyanometaplasia clinically the development of painless swelling with dusky erythema painless swelling dusky erythema in the hard palate with ulcerations it is the clinical presentation of necrotizing cyanometaplasia the anesthesia history of anesthesia in the affected area will help you in the diagnose this lesion so the anesthesia at the uh, palatal area will lead to local ischemic condition of the minor salivary gland leading to s necrosis the clinical presentation can resemble squamous cell carcinoma as a clinical presentation but we can differentiate it by the history and the painful condition or painful uh, uh, status of this condition so lateral lesion is usual but it might be lat uh, bilaterally differential diagnosis the, 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 the lesions which can resemble the presence the uh, clinically presented cyanometaplasia necrotizing cyanometaplasia are the traumatic ulcers and the aphthous ulcers squamous cell carcinoma syphilis and non hodgkin's lymphoma are the differential diagnosis of necrotizing cyanometaplasia the diagnosis of cyano uh, necrotizing cyanometaplasia in this diagnosis we n uh, need to rule out the squamous cell carcinoma and other al and other ulcerative lesions such as chancar or goma so the biopsy is required to make the definite diagnosis 
management in the management is uh, the, the, the the legion is benign and self-limiting so the antiseptic mouthwashes or spray should be used to just treat the ulceration symptomatically healing will occur usually from six to uh, ten weeks recurrence is unusual and there is no functional impairment since the lesion is localized in the hard palate and the healing is also can occur nearly tuberculosis is an infection which can infect the human body by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria this bacteria can infect the body the human body causing a tuberculosis tuberculosis the TB is a respiratory infection and can be presented in the oral cavity as an oral ulcer it is the one of the most prevalent infectious diseases in the world particularly in the developing countries droplets from sputum containing mycobacterium tuberculosis this is the pathogen which called which cause the TB so it is a ulcer of TB it is as an oral manifestation of systemic condition clinically the ulcer can be presented in the dorsal surface of the tongue and also might be presented in other oral sites irregular with raised borders and may resemble deep fungal infection or squamous cell carcinoma radio opacities and uh, on the radiograph due to calcification with in the lymph nodes of the patient can be also founded the differential diagnosis of tuberculosis fungal infection squamous cell carcinoma recurrent after ulcer pest disease as well as the syphilitic lesions leukemia lobus erythematosus and sarcoidosis all these can be differentiated from tuberculosis by the mucosal biopsy so the mucosal biopsy in the patient with tuberculosis we will see a characteristic granulomatous inflammation with well formed granulomatoma and also link hands gain cells and necrosis this is the histopathological picture of tuberculosis also some uh, test can uh, uh, proven to detect the tuberculi bacilli the tubercle bacilli can be detected by zell nelson stain or fat stains this stains is specialized stain to detect the tb pathogen mantox skin test also can be positive can be used to be uh, positive as a result of previous infection in the patient the management of ulcers related to tuberculosis as you mentioned before it is a systemic uh, an arm manifestation of systemic disease so the systemic chemotherapy if started to treat that the systemic condition so the oral lesions will resolve some antibiotics can be used to treat the tuberculosis like rifampicin ionized ionized or also the uh, ethimibutol and some other antibiotics can be used administrated and used to treat the tuberculosis patient typically combinations of these drugs can be used for 10 months to two years of treatment and you as a dentist should refer the patient if you diagnosed it as a tuberculosis patient you should refer the patient to the physician to treat the systemic underlying systemic condition and also the ulcer can be the oral ulcer can be resolved and after the treatment of the systemic condition you just need to treat the patient with symptomatic and local uh, management to just treat the symptoms of your patient syphilitic ulcers also can be presented in the oral cavity as an oral manifestation of systemic disease as we know the syphilis caused by spirochete trypanoma palladium pathogen 
sexually transmitted diseases can be transmitted by sexual intercourse and occurs usually in the uh, genitals also present on the lips oral mucosa as well as a result of the oral genital contacts three stages of syphilis as we know primary syphilis secondary syphilis and the tertiary syphilis clinical features in the primary syphilis chancre can be for, uh, uh, presented in the oral cavity in the form of ulcer a firm nodule which breaks down after few days to leave a painless ulcer and all these details can be detected by extensive and detailed history from your patient these ulcers are with indurated margins as we see in this clinical picture cervical lymph nodes also as the patient has a systemic condition generally and usually in large system uh, lymph, uh, lymph nodes in the neck of the patient and rubbery in consistency the chancre is highly infectious and should be examined with caution so you have to protect yourself and your dental team the lesions of primary syphilis usually resolve, resolve within 2 to 12 weeks without scarring this is related to the clinical pictures of primary syphilitic lesions and secondary syphilitic lesions approximately six weeks or longer after primary infection started characterized by macular or papular rashes and illness malaise the patient general status will be compromised the patient complaining also from headache and generalized lymph adenopathy and sore throat this is the se secondary syphilitic lesions also in secondary syphilitic lesions the oral mucosa is involved in approximately one third of those patients which can be clinically founded as an oral ulcerations described as, as a snail track ulcers snail track ulcers infectious infective but resolve within two to six weeks 30% of the patients with untreated secondary syphilis developed to latent form many years after the initial infection. Two oral lesions are in the tertiary form of syphilis. So this is the primary, uh, there, are the, there is a primary uh, syphilitic lesion and secondary syphilitic lesion as well as the tertiary syphilitic lesion. And so tertiary syphilitic lesion will find what we called it a goma in the hard palate of the patient leukoplakia affecting the dorsal surface of the tongue also can be presented in the tertiary syphilitic patients congenital abnormalities which can be presented as a congenital syphilis and also there is a nasal deformity known as a saddle nose as we see in the clinical pictures of this patient this is a saddle nose appearance in tertiary syphilitic patient so the chancre or the primary syphilitic lesions can be presented in the lips or on the lateral surface of the tongue or in the buccal mucosa as well as on the hard palate this is in the hard palate is a goma of tertiary syphilitic patient there is what we called it a Hutchinson's trade which include interstitial keratosis and deafness as well as dental abnormalities these dental abnormalities <coughs> these dental abnormalities consisting of notched or screwdriver shaped central incisors as we see in these pictures the central incisor has an abnormal shape as well as the molars has an abnormal cuspid shapes we call we can call it as a mulberry tooth or mulberry molars differential diagnosis of syphilis tuberculosis lesions and sarcoidosis granulomatous fungal mycocytic uh, infections squamous cell carcinoma and necrotizing metablasia. so the syphilitic ulcers should be differentiated from those similarities mentioned 
in this slide including the ulcer secondary to systemic diseases and ulcer in human and def immune deficiency virus diseases HIV patient or due to ulcers from metastatic tumors which came from other side of the body keratoacanthoma and necrotizing cellular metabolism as well as chemical bear should be also differentiated from the syphilitic ulcers how can we diagnose the syphilitic ulcers dark field microscopy should be used of a smear taking from either primary or secondary lesions the histopathologist or the microbiologist will see or will find a uh, tuberculosis pallidum tuberculosis pallidum present in the smear taken from the ulcer proving that the patient has a syphilitic ulcer so it's complaining from syphilis surgical investigations also the most reliable way to diagnose syphilis from the late stage of primary infection onwards because the tribunoma palladium pathogen cannot be routinely cultured in vitro so you can take a serology or a, a 10 milli of clotted sample from your patient you will take or you refer the patient for the laboratory to check the presence or the absence of syphilis in your patient tests should be undertaken the tests which are taken in the laboratory to diagnose the syphilitic infection venereal disease reference laboratory test as well as the trypanoma palladium hemagglutination as well as the fluorescent trypanoma antibody absorbed all these tests can be performed to diagnose the patient with syphilitic lesions so after the diagnosis reached the most effective treatment of any stage of syphilis is intramuscular procaine penicillin as an antibiotic to fight the trypanoma palladium trypanoma palladium has remained sensitive to penicillin erythromycin as well as for tetracyclines so these antibiotics can be used to treat patients with syphilis in fact you as a dentist should refer the patient for the specialist after you confirm the diagnosis of syphilis and just treat the oral manifestation of the ulcers and the specialist will treat the patient for the systemic condition patient should be followed after for the two, two last years and the serological examination repeated over to find if the patient is in fact treated or not acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis the ANAG is one of the ulcerative lesions which can be presented in the oral cavity and also is not fully understood but strictly an aerobic bacteria and spirochetes can lead to these infections the most common is the fusobacterium species and uh, can be demonstrated in those lesions tobacco smoking and stress have been implicated also as an etiological predisposing factors clinically the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis can be presented in the oral cavity as a rapid development of painful ulcerations affecting the gingival margin so it is just localized for gingival margin and also the interdental papillae associated with marked halitosis so the patient might be came to your clinic complaining from halitosis grapes of the membranous slough demarcated bunch out crater like depressions at the crest of the interdental papilla can also be found that as we see in this clinical pictures this is a crater like and punched out appearance of or eaten appearance of the interdental papillae of the patient clinical features also spontaneous gingival hemorrhage without any brushing without any eating 
or pronounced bleeding of the patient the patient might complain might complain from bleeding from his gum without any stimulus local lymph adenopathy can be also find it by examination and also a slight elevation of temperature because there is a, an infection high fever increased pulse rate leukocytosis as well as loss of appetite are also a symptoms can be found in your patient with acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis what are the similar lesions which can be differentiated from the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis the herpetic gingivostomatitis infections can be presented in clinical pictures same as or similar to the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis chronic periodontitis also discomatous gingivitis after stomatitis tuberculous gingival lesions also a similarities to the acute necrotizing gingivitis ulcerative gingivitis as well as candidal infections pemphigus erythromultiform leg complainers also can be differentiated as a differential diagnosis for acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis how we can diagnose the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis as we see in this clinical pictures there is a characteristic appearance of gingiva punched out loss of interdental papilla and also the presence of the pseudomembranous laughing so we can diagnose acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis by the clinical history of gingival pain and ulceration and spontaneous bleeding microscopic examination of gram stain smear taken from an area of ulceration just show numerous fusobacteria and medium-sized spiral sheets and acute inflammatory cells how to manage acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis mechanical cleaning and deprivement of the affected area by scaling and root planning if there is any possibility use of hydrogen peroxide mouthwashes and metronidazole metronidazole is an antibiotic primarily used for gram negative bacteria 25 mg 8 hourly 3 times daily prescribed for 3 4 to uh, 7 days for managed acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis as well as the oral hygiene should be started to prevent further gingival damage a review of this lecture we had talking about types of tuberculosis and how to differentiate the oral ulcers from tuberculous infection from other similar lesions lymph nodes of syphilis as well as the investigations of syphilis and tuberculosis in blood lab and also the strains of mucobacterium tuberculosis that are resistant to many of the drugs all these should be reviewed and also it is an important information regarding this lecture in conclusion we had speak about squamous cell carcinoma necrotizing cellular metaplasia tuberculosis and syphilis as well as the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis the assignment of this lecture is case presentations each student or group of students should present a cases with ulcerative lesions regarding squamous cell carcinoma and infections such as tuberculosis syphilis and acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis as we mentioned in this lectures syphilis tuberculosis and acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis are caused by bacterial infections and can be manifested or orally as a, an ulcers so you need to present a cases with squamous cell carcinoma and sialometaplasia as well as 
infectious related oral ulcers this assignment and explanation of this assignment can uh, will be uh, provided to you as a word attachment document in the LMS website under the assignment number nine thank you very much for your listening